was one of the most open investigations in the history of research. I guarantee you. Every, everything we did, basically, is up on, that, on our dedicated website. You can go back through the archives. You can even see the comments people made during the draft comment period. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's all there in black and white. We had numerous press briefings. We had public meetings. Video cameras, excuse me, video video cameras are not allowed oh. because I will be showing pictures that are copyrighted. So I think there is a rule, and it's the sign is on the door. Okay, so I appreciate Sorry. if you can turn it off, please. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, after the call has finished. Okay, that's your mark. Mm-hmm. The call goes down first. No matter the mechanism, we don't bother about the mechanism. The code goes down first, the perimeter uh, remains standing. Please, no videotaping. I don't know why you're doing that. <laughs> uh, so you uh, I, I, cannot, I cannot talk while there are video cameras. I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this or not, but this shows the, sim- the video or simulation along with it, this uh, vibration of that, the north. This was one of the most open investigations in the history of research. I guarantee you. Every, everything we did, basically, is up on, that, on our dedicated website. I mean, we tried to be as above board and open and, and forthcoming as, you know, anybody's well, ever be, been. Would, why won't the NIST report release their collapse visual, uh, visualization analysis? Um, why didn't the NIST report um, discuss how one might balance the... Com- the com- why don't you ask a technical question? If well, I'd be happy to answer it. I am asking a technical question. use a very complicated computer model for this. How can you be so sure that this is actually accurate, what you want? It's a virtual proof, some might say. Well, computer models these days are incredibly robust. We actually design 1,000-foot, 2,000-foot buildings today purely based on computer models. We design airplanes that fly with computer models. We certainly can do failure analysis using computer models. Thank you. That wasn't it. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you. Isn't it possible that the uh, that the iron rich spheres, which are in the World Trade Center dust, are uh, actually indicative of of uh, support for the controlled demolition hypothesis? I'm sorry, they're not. Is it possible that 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit is uh, is not reachable by uh, common uh, building combustible fires? Is it is it possible that thermite could be in the dust? After all, sir, you didn't. Actually, look for it in the dust. Excuse me. Sorry, but he's, there are some reporters who'd like to. Uh, isn't it possible that the uh, that the iron rich spheres, which are in the World Trade Center dust, are uh, actually indicative of of uh, support for the controlled demolition hypothesis? I'm sorry, they're not. Both the dust and thermite contain iron oxide and aluminium. What do you think? (laughs) I would say that it melted out this 
the whole side oh, it went right through the aluminum course, I should have. So as the thermite reacts, it blows molten iron into the air where it uh, forms droplets due to surface tension and then those solidify and form these little spheres. It is rather like um, a DNA <clears throat> in an investigation. In other words, this dust carries all this information of what caused it, what created it. And it holds on to that information and it's just crying from the dust for us to look at it. Would your um, team be willing to sit down with, with them and, I guess, hash out some of these uh, disagreements um, at some point, just to lay the whole thing to rest? Well, um, I'm not sure that that is necessarily uh, uh, a, a productive uh, use of time, uh, because, um, you know, the uh, science has to be read, has to be understood, and has to be digested when you, when you don't have a two-way discussion based on peer-reviewed publications, when you don't have discussion based on solid scientific uh, theories, uh, it really doesn't make any sense. This was one of the most open investigations in the history of research. I'm curious about uh, the, uh, the pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the towers. Um, I, I am too. And <laughs> please tell me about it. You, have you seen it? Why? Well, not personally, but my witnesses there found huge poles of molten steel beneath the towers. And uh, scientists, some scientists, don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have melt, melted all that steel. Um, first of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. Uh, I was on the site, I was on the steel yards, so I can't, I don't know that that's so. And this structural engineer, Abu Hazan Astani from Berkeley, cites and documents, I saw melting of girders in the World Trade Center. Nobody who's produced it. Nobody who's produced it. Get down below and you'd see molten steel. Molten steel running down the channel rails. Like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like lava. Like, like, it was like lava, lava from a volcano. Beams where it was molten steel that was being dug out. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall. And the cleanup was very difficult. The steel was coming out red in certain areas from the first couple of weeks, at least. This fused element of, of steel, mo molten steel. I can't, I don't know that that's so. There's uh, a video so of it. It's around 2,600 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I think it's probably pretty difficult to get that kind of uh, uh, temperatures in a, um, uh, in a fire. Well, NASA pictures, uh, thermal uh, images showed those, those sorts of temperatures in the basin. Could you send them to me? Okay. My name is Mark, and I'm the individual who was questioning Dr. Gross, and he asked me to email to him those thermal images. When I approached him after his talk to get his email address for that purpose, he refused to provide it to me. I think this is important because it reveals the attitude of the NIST investigators, which is one of willful ignorance of what really happened on 9-11.
looking like a three speed.